Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Well, Catherine, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm fine, thanks. Thank you. Excellent. Well, I'm, again, so pleased that you're able to join me. This is going to be fantastic. For my audience members who are not as familiar with you and your work, how do you describe yourself and what you do? I am a self-employed musician, and so that means I do a whole wide variety of things. Uh, I do quite a bit of teaching. So mm -hmm. I have a private teaching studio and then I also run some school programs around the area. And uh, recently I've started teaching some courses at the local public library. So okay. uh, learn fiddle kind of courses. Yeah. And then I'm also active as a performer. And so my performance takes three different kind of, um, three different styles. So I'm quite active in Baroque music. So music written from around 1600 to 1750. And I actually, I have a period instrument. So a violin that was made during that time. Um, and I use the gut strings, like we do as much authentically as we can. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that I do. And then I play a lot of Celtic music. I have a four piece Celtic band. Uh, and then I play in the local symphony as well. So I play classical music. Yes. Wow. So you are very, very busy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So before we get into your your uh, your music a bit, I'm I'm curious to hear about what first inspired you to get into classical and Celtic and and uh, music. So the the very origin is my dad, and okay. so my dad was a botanist by trade. He was a university professor. But he played the violin and he played the fiddle around the house. Mm -hmm. And then my elementary school, they had a program there where you could learn violin. And so I have an older brother. And when he was old enough, he started taking lessons. And then I wanted to do anything that my older brother did. And so I started taking lessons as soon as I could. So that's the origin of music and the okay. love of music. Yeah. Um, as far as Doing it professionally, that was never a plan. <laughs> <laughs> the plan was to be a scientist. I was very good in math and science in school. And, you know, of course, where my dad was a, a professor and, you know, that just seemed like a really natural thing for me to do. So that was the plan in high school. And then one day I was sitting in, in music class and I thought, you know, I could, I could give this a try and so applied to university and got a degree in music and I have never looked back. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm glad that, that happened right there in high school. So, <laughs> so um, let's talk about your university days. So what did you, when you say you, you studied music in university, did you study how to play violin in, and in university or was it a combination of a lot of other things like music theory and, and then did violin on the side? So my degree uh, is in music theory. Okay. And my, my specialty, my area of, of particular interest is modal counterpoint. And so that is a particular style of music that was written, again, back in, in the Baroque period. Um, and so the whole point, the way that counterpoint works is that it's not, you're not worried about the chords that it makes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's individual lines. They're all melodic lines and they line up into harmonious sounds, but it's not, you know, a one chord going to a four chord, going to a five chord, uh, which is the way that music later on has developed. So that was my particular area of interest. Um, I did take violin lessons because it was a music degree. I took violin lessons. I played in the symphony. I played in the pit orchestra for the Savoy Society, the Gilbert and Sullivan shows. Mm -hmm. I was down at the pubs uh, jamming every week. 
Um, and that's where I fell in love with Baroque music, with actually playing Baroque music as well. Uh, so again, even in university, the plan was to <laughs> become a prof, <laughs> which hasn't <laughs> happened. <laughs> So uh, music theory was my 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 specialty at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm so at what point did your because I know you're you're again proficient in in Celtic fiddle and classical violin. What is like what when did those two kind of things start forming your your interest in each of those? And I guess also is there is there a physical difference between a Celtic fiddle and a classical violin, or is it just the nomenclature you call one, like what style you're playing. Right. It's it's all about the style of music that you're playing. The okay. physical instruments are the same. Okay. At least for me, because I do like to be able to flip back and forth across that line. Mm -hmm. um, you will meet fiddlers who have their instruments set up a little differently because they may have different goals. So I don't know how much you know about the violin, but the bridge on the violin holds not very much. Strings. Okay. And on a classical violin, the way that I like my violin set up is quite curved so that mm -hmm. I have the option of hitting one string or I can hit more than one if that's what I want to do. Some fiddlers will have that flattened out so that it's easier to hit two strings because that's potentially, depending on what style of fiddle music you're playing, that can be something that you want to do more than you would in classical music. Okay. So the, the answer for me and the basic general answer is there is no difference. Okay. Uh, however, you know, there is a certain amount of personal preference in how you have your instrument set up. Sure. Is there, of, of the three styles that you play, is there a particular style that you prefer now more than the other two? No, there really isn't. It's all about what, what I'm doing. So um, my career is very seasonal. So in the winter, I tend to play more classical music. Um, the symphony is quite busy through the winter, and I play more, Cel uh, not Celtic, more Baroque music through the winter. Okay. And then the summer, that's when you're doing the outdoor festivals and the outdoor summer concerts. And so there tends to be more fiddling in the summer. And so I often get kind of wrapped up in whatever it is that I'm doing. And then when I change, when it's time to change and go do something else, when I'm immersed in that world again, I go, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's why I love this, right? And so it's yeah. this constant discovery for me where I'm in one world, really enjoying it, and then I flip into another one, I'm like, right, this is amazing, because they all bring such different things. With mm -hmm. playing in a symphony, for example, uh, you don't get to do what you want, right? Like, you have to play what all the other violins are playing and that's that you have to use the same bowings you have you know if the conductor wants a crescendo here you're doing a crescendo here you know like it's uh but being a part of that huge sound is so incredible mm -hmm. and then when I play in my Celtic band I get to do anything I want I make up all, all my own parts if I decide you know that I think this note would sound really cool here then then I do it Right. So I have that freedom in the Celtic music that I don't have in the, the symphonic music. Mm -hmm. Interesting. OK, so let's uh, let's talk about your first album. So 2007, you had your debut album, Take the Happy Road. Mm -hmm. What what initially wanted you made you want to record an album? Well, it's it's one of those things as a musician that that kind of makes you feel like you've made it mm -hmm. right it's one of those stepping stones where yeah you've been doing gigs yeah you've been you know playing music and having fun but to have a physical album that you've done you know that the, there's a certain achievement there there's a certain milestone that uh, that just feels good to do you know it, it's it, it's a stepping stone that that in some ways other people expect, but it's, it's really about having that, you know, this is what I've done. This, because music is so, it, it's not tangible, right? It's not like right. I'm making a cabinet. It's not like I can point to something <laughs> and say, I made this. Right. Right, you know, I make it and it's gone. 
Um, so the CD recording is our way as musicians of being able to say, you know, I, I made this. Right. <laughs> this is I, what I do. All right. I physically done this. Here is proof. Yeah. So what what was the process like for your your first CD in in 2007? Like, did you like did you work with a um you know a, a record label to do that? How was it like in the the recording studio itself? What was that like? What did it feel like at that time? So all of my albums have been independent. Okay. Uh, so there's no record label associated with any of them. Um, the first one. The guitarist that I was working with at that point in time, you know, we did, he did all of, all of my gigs with me. And so I just picked out a bunch of tunes that we'd been playing and booked a studio uh, here in Fredericton. Mm -hmm. And we went in and it was, it was an incredible process. Uh, I have never recorded the same way again, because it was probably not a good plan as many first projects go. Right. Right, right, right. So what, what, why <laughs> and, wasn't a good plan? Well, we went in and we recorded the whole album in one day. Wow. And and that was that. We yeah. started at, you know, whatever it was, 9 a.m. My guitarist had a gig that night. So we're like, okay, this is the cutoff point. We're <laughs> doing it all before then. <laughs> I drove home, at, which I probably shouldn't have been driving. I drove home, got home. I was just, my head hurt, right? Because I had been thinking so hard and trying so hard to do everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I got home and I said to my husband, I'm like, I don't care what happens. You know, if you want food, <laughs> you're going to have to do something about it because like, <laughs> I've got nothing left. And it was <laughs> such a draining experience. I have never thought that hard, like worked that hard and left with nothing, nothing left. Um, so I have never recorded another album in one day. <laughs> 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 that was quite intense and not a good plan and I would not suggest it <laughs> yeah definitely not <laughs> excellent so you've gone on to record I think was it four cds total now so five five solo okay. albums and then one album with my band okay excellent and it, it looks like it each you know album you released you get more and more recognition and you've won a number of awards from them what is so now, when you record an album, what do you do differently and how do you approach that process different from when you first did it in 2007? So I really like themes. Uh, when I recorded my first album, it was just a matter of this is what I'm playing. Okay. You know, so it was a mix of whatever. Since then, I recorded uh, an album called By Request, which was a lot of tunes that were being requested at a pub that I was playing at quite often. And so it was more old time Don Messer kind of style music. And then um, the most recent one, Storm Queen, uh, was all original music, which is something I'd never done. Mm -hmm. And so like that was 100% original. And now I'm actually in the process of recording my sixth album. And this one is called Tea and Tunes. And it's all music that my guitarist and I have played on Facebook Live. We do a weekly Facebook Live that's called Tea and Tunes because yeah. we drink tea and we play tunes. <laughs> and, and so we have picked all the music for this upcoming album from those shows. And we actually had my Facebook fans, you know, the people who've been watching the shows have been voting on mm -hmm. which ones they think they want, you know, they'd like to have on the album. Uh, so that's a big difference now. Uh, I like to have some sort of story around the album as far as like why record an album now? What is it that I want to either potentially say, you know, with the album or at least what, you know, what, I don't quite know how to word what I want to say. What's the unifying factor? You know, like why are these pieces all together? Sure. Interesting. When you, what's the process like for you to write a, a song? Do you already have like a, a ritual or a tradition that you use when you're writing a new piece of music or does it flow naturally? What's that like? So for me, uh, I need a lot of time. Uh, it's not that writing an individual tune takes a lot of time, but I need time to get out of life. 
right? There's so much where I have so much going on with the teaching and 